Let me record now. Look at this now. meeting is being recorded. One second. Let me just get my notes. There you go. All right, let's get. All right, good evening once again. Good evening, guys, and thank you for coming, Jake. Um, what's your name? Alex. Alex. Liam, Papang, Mahal, Jail, Clayford, and for all those people who's online tonight, and um, for the people who's about to listen to our YouTube also, thank you for your um, diligent studying the Word of God. And I would like to thank you guys for uh, your presence tonight. And again, this is another day to glorify the Lord, to give thanks to Him, because He loves us so much that He sent His Son to the cross. But before I begin, I would like to um, make a little announcement. Uh, I would like to congratulate Dean and Anna also for we have another um, member with our family, um, Grayson, Grayson Jordan. Uh, let's pray for him. And also for Kai. Let's pray for Kai uh, and Jaden. Uh, they're going to um, the service. And, you know, it's tough. It's tough. It's a big decision that you have to make in life, but those kind of decisions that will change your life, you know, and sometimes we have to rest. Sometimes we have to rest and we have to trust the Lord every moment that we make decisions that we take in our in our life. So um, those kind of decisions that you will that will, you know, uh, ask God for uh, guidance and and all those support that we have from the family and everybody you know so let's pray for him and um pray for our nation for our loved ones back home in the philippines and and again tonight i would like to say that the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword and pursing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and joints and marrow and it is the critical thought and intents of the heart all scripture the word of god is god breathed God give this to us so that we can learn what's the will of God, what's his plan for our lives. It's God breathe and it's profitable. It's a profit for everyone who wants to study the word of God. For correction, the word of God will correct your life. For instruction, this is where you get all the instruction in life. You know, there are so many instructions in life, but this is the real instructions that we can get. It's in the word of God. And for correction, instruction, and for uh, for the man of God and in righteousness, for the man of God thoroughly furnace for all good works. That will change your life for good works. And study to show thyself approved unto God. This is what we are doing. It's not only the pastor's teacher will study the word and it's on an, an all, all believers who, who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ must study his word. All, study to show the, the word, study to show thyself approved unto God. And the workman needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, tonight, before we start with Bible study, uh, it is very important that you need to be clean before the Lord. Every time you, you do something for the Lord, you have to confess your sin. And by confessing your sin, you sin your mental, you sin in your verbal, and you, you sin against your action to God with mental sin. Mental sin is pride, arrogant, envy, jealousy. Those are mental attitude sins. And then verbal sins is lying, maligning, gossiping. Those are the verbal sins. And action sins are stealing, um, murder, all those things. We have to confess it to the Lord so that we can be in the fellowship with God. With your heads bow and let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for tonight. Father, thank you for who and what you are. You are a loving God, and also you are a justice father. Father, the nation, we know what's going on around the world because of, of your word. Father, bless us tonight as we continue to study with your word, and we bless your our brothers and sisters in the Philippines and, and all over the world, Father, as they continue to study with your word also. Father, thank you tonight once again for... Uh, this privilege and opportunity to study with your word. Thank you for your provision that you provide for us every day. 
and uh, we give we ask the Holy Spirit to give us that uh, in uh, spiritual insight as we continue to study with your word, Father, to have the spiritual understanding. Uh, with this, all these things, we um, pray this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Now, last week, we are still in studying about preparing for battle. Every moment in your life, there's always a battle. Um, again, we have now the new generation. Every, every step of your life, you'll face battles in your life. There's always a battle. And that battle, it's always tied up in spiritual, in the spiritual life. It's not the physical. Paul is very clear in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. He said, uh, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. You have to be strong in the Lord. Be strengthened in the Lord. Because there's so many believers, there's so many people that they are discouraged, they are disappointed, but he wants to encourage you, me, to be strong in him. You cannot be strong outside in him, but you can only be strong in the Lord. Because that's where the strength, that's where the strength, the, the word of God will give you strength all the way of your life until you die. The word of God uh, is the power that gave your soul, that changed your soul, that changed people, is the word. Now, last week, we continued that uh, studies that we have. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, we are already in verse 11. What did he say? Put on the full armor of God. Now, you need to have the armor. God provide the armor because you are in the battle. Every believer, you are in the battlefield. You are at war. Now, so many, so many people, they think that they're not at war because they are, you know, they're okay. They are comfortable. They are living in a comfortable life. But... Believers who are living in the comfortable life, they are already a casualty in war. Now, he said, put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm. That's the purpose for you to be able to stand firm, to stand firm. <clears throat> now, I don't know if you saw that movie, 300, the 300, and every military, they know what is the, what's the real meaning of the word stand firm is to hold your ground, to hold your ground, to hold that perimeter so that you can advance and hold again, advance and hold again, and advance and hold again. That's how you do it in life. That's how you do it in the Christian way of life so that you will, you will become a mature believer. That's how you do it. Life, there's no shortcut in life. There's no shortcut, you know? Many people, they want... Uh, you know, uh, shortcuts. No, there's no shortcuts. You have to go with this process, the system which God gave to each one of us. This is the run of our race. That's this is the this is Paul's um, uh, dire, loud. He was telling the believers to stand firm against the schemes of the devil, the schemes of the devil, his method, um, his system of the devil because the devil he is a very organized the devil they were very very organized the the the, the satan's table of organization they are more organized than the church sometimes we are so crowded we don't even know we don't even have no system at all you know and in the church they are i was listening to the 98.5 uh, the rate now, those peoples who go to the church building to have the fellowship, many believers, especially the, the younger generation, they, they already, it's been eroded already. Unlike back in the days, in the time that we are back in the 80s, back in the 90s, you know, you can still see the population that those people every Sunday, they already, they, they gather together to have a fellowship. But nowadays, it's already been eroded. Because we need to teach the younger generations to, to, to stand. Because the younger generation, if you don't stand, you know, it says that the hope of the nation, you guys are the hope of the nation, but the, the nation will be hopeless if this, this younger generation is not being taught with the word of God. It's been hopeless. Now, he said the schemes of the devil, A, he said, put on the full armor of God. This armor that God provided for each one of us, it has two 
aspects. It has the defense and the offense. It has the defense and the offense. Now, Paul states the objective. Why do you have to put your armor? I stated that last week, the reason why there's so many wounded believers, because they're not putting their armor on. You got hit. You're not putting your bulletproof. You get hit by the enemy. You should put your helmet, helmet on. You know, when you are having a bicycle, you should have your helmet. Or you, if you are doing the bike, you have to put your helmet, your, your, your elbow pads and the knee pads so that you will never going to get hurt. The same thing, the same, the same principle in the Christian way of life. You have to put on your, your full armor. To do that, you must put, put on the armor of God. The word put on, it means in duo, it means you have to wear it. You have to wear the full armor of God. It's like your clothing. It's like your clothing. That's what the word in duo means in the Greek. This is another command that Paul gives in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. And he said, this means you have to wear, to wear your armor in a military sense. To be cloth that with that armor. And what are those armor? Is this area? the armor of God becomes a garment in your life? That armor becomes a garment in your life. You know, we wear we wear clothes every day. We need to wear a proper clothes every day. No, in the winter time, we wear a jacket. You know, we wear a jacket in the winter time. And sometimes in the one in, in the summertime, you need to wear a proper clothes. You're not gonna wear a jacket in the summertime. Because it is so, it is very hot. You, you know, you're not going to wear your, your uh, shorts during the winter time because it's cold. Now, you need to wear the proper garments. Now, to wear the proper garments, especially uh, in war, you go to war and you're just wearing your pajama. That's how... The believers, they lift their guard, they, they lift their armor back in the command center, and they just go to the to the war zone with their pajama. What happened if you go to the battle zone with your pajama? It's, you you will get easily you will hit easily by the enemy, and you get wounded right away because you don't have the armor that can block the bullets from the enemy now the orange stance indicates that you have to put your put on your armor your full armor in the point of time what time is that the moment you believe in the lord jesus christ the moment you accepted the lord jesus christ as your lord and savior and that's the time you put on your armor full armor of god once and for all and put on your armor of god and don't ever, don't ever take it off. Don't ever take it off. Because Satan is working 24-7. Satan is working 24-7 in, 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 in every day. The good news is also God is working 24-7. He's not sleeping. In the book of Peter, what did Peter say? Satan, he is like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. He's looking for somebody to be the victim. He is a predator. He's like a lion. He just watch for those prey. And he will devour it. Now, if you're not putting your armor, then you are a willing victim for Satan. Then the question arises, it says, how to put on your whole, uh, the whole armor of God? How you do that? By prayer. You have to pray. And in prayer, there's always adoration, thanksgiving, petition, and all those uh, aspects of prayer. It's always good to pray. Do you pray? You should pray. Because there's power in prayer. I always pray. That's why we have to pray for our loved ones back home in the Philippines, our, our loved ones here in, in Las Vegas, and our loved ones all over the world, and especially for your work, for your job. You pray for your health. 
And one of the aspects of prayer is thanksgiving. Are you thankful? Are you thankful for the Lord? Be thankful. I'm so, uh, you should be thankful. You should be grateful for everything that you have right now. You know? That's how you put on the full armor of God, through prayer, communication to God. You have to communicate to God all the time. Now here, the full armor of God, believers are commanded to wear themselves the spiritual armor. See, you see that picture? See? Do you think you can hit the person inside with that armor? You will never going to hit him. It's hard for him to get hit because you know why? He is wearing his full armor. And that armor, the Bible says in verse 11, 12, 13, he says, wear, you need, you need to wear the loins girt about with truth, the belt of truth. That's the belt. The second one is the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. That's the righteousness of God. You have to wear that. And every, and, and, and every armor is, is, is been attacked by Satan. It's been attacked by Satan. See, the righteousness of God, that should be a bulletproof. Now, the feet, the shoes... Number three, we have feet shod with preparation for the gospel of peace. That's where for your mobility. And you need to have the shield. You need to have the shield. The shield of faith. And you also have to have the helmet of salvation. You need to have the helmet of salvation. And another one, you also have the sword of the spirit now the sword represents that's your offense that's where you use your sword for and the word sword here is the word rima it means the word of god that it's already been transferred in your soul it's ready for application now it's sad that if you don't have no word of god you don't have no sword the sword is the word of god that you already been studied day by day now, if you don't have the, the sword, then the tendency, you, you don't have no offense. You only have the defense in the Christian way of life. So the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and also prayer. And another one is number eight. That's part of prayer is we call this supplication. The word supplication, it means supply. It means the supply line. Now, in military science, it's very important that you need to have the contact, the constant contact from your command center is so that they will give you the supply. That line shouldn't be cut off. In the battlefield, that's the number one. That's the number one thing that will cut off from the enemy. That's the number one the enemy will cut off is your supply. You go in the mission and you lose your supply you run out of bullets, you run out of ammo, then you don't have no more supply. And until then, you're just waiting until you die. Now, that's, that's a very important thing that the prayer, your prayer life will change everything. Your prayer life. If, if you have problems in life, call to God. That's why Paul, he states in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, what did he say? Be anxious for nothing. Do not worry. Do not worry. There's no things to be worried. There's no things to be anxious. The word midden, there's nothing. The word nothing, it does, it's in the, the Greek word midden. It means not one thing in your life that you have to be worried for. There's nothing in your life that you have, you do, you have to be worried. Because everything that happens in your life, God already knew back in eternity past. He knew what's going on in your life. He knows, he even knows what's going to be ahead of you. He knows what's going on. Now, here we have supplication. You have to put the full armor of God. And he goes on to say, the angelic conflict, the angelic conflict is just like a chess match, you know, uh, the chess. You know, the chess? Yeah, we have this right here. It's like a chess, it's a matchup with Satan. And God, 
this a match. Now, when you came to this life, when you came into this life, into this world, and even the Christian way of life, it seems like the devil is winning all the time. Have you even experienced that? It seems like the devil, yeah, it seems like the devil is winning all the time. Now, but the more you become mature, the more you become mature through the consistent intake with the word of God, you realize that there is still one move, one move left on the board. The more you realize through the studying the word of God, you realize that there's only there's still one move left before you can beat checkmate. Do you know how to play chess? Yeah, good. You know, you can relate on what's what's going on in this life. Satan wants to checkmate you. Satan wants to checkmate everybody. Now, the angelic conflict is like a chase match. Now, I was watching that before. I have my friend. I was watching him. He's a very good player. He's a very good chase player. And I was watching while they were playing, and they move and move and move, and he counter move and move. And it came to the point that they stopped. They stopped. I said, like, what's going on? I thought my friend was already been checkmate. And they've been staring for the chase board for a while. I can't even see that. I'm just a beginner on, on, on playing chess. But if you are an expert of playing chess, you can see that there is another move what's been left. And I look at my friend and he just, he, he smiled because he found out that there is one move left. There is one move left. I can't even see that. I went to the other angle. I went to the other side. I can't even see how, how where is that move? But see, when you, you are in the angelic conflict, Satan wants to checkmate you. So now God and Satan, they are in the chase board. Here, your enemy, there's a good news. Whenever times in your life that you're about to give up, remember this, that Satan, your enemy, has mis miscalculated something. We thought over here, God has a good news for every one of us because you, you get the final move. You will get the final move. But a lot of us is deceived by Satan into thinking that the devil is winning all the time. You, you think about that? Sometimes we've been losing and losing. We can't even have a victory in our life. It seems like so hard to become victorious being a Christian. It seems so hard to find that happiness. It seems so hard to find that joy. It seems so hard to be, to, to not to worry about things. But you know what? Because we've been deceived by Satan to keep on thinking that he keeps on winning all the time. He's always in, he, we think that he is in control. He is, he's ruling us. We have been deceived into thinking that he, not us, will get the final move. I used to think about this before. I think I'm already in the end. I thought I'm, this is the dead end, Lord. This is the dead end. But came to think about that, you know, I went to that passage in the book of Matthew when, when the angel told Mary that there is no impassable, nothing is impassable with God. Then I hold that verse for so many years and even in my life. You think that you are, this is the dead end in your life. No, there will be time in your life that you say, wow, this is the dead end now. God said, no, this is just the beginning. Because from here, you're going up. Now, we have been deceived by Satan into thinking that he's running the show. He's the one who's running the show. God said, no, I am the one is in control. I am sovereign. I am the one who's running the show. 
not him. I am the one. The last one we have, we had been deceived into thinking that he is, he is the final decision maker about our well-being, about our joy, about our happiness, about our spirituality, about our spiritual life. We had been deceived by Satan by accepting the lie, you know. The lie is in the world. We had been deceived and we accept that lie in the world that, you know, Oh, I can't be, I cannot be victorious in this life because, you know, I'm so weak. But God says, the more you are weak, then you are strong. We had been deceived so much thinking that the final decision maker is the devil. He is the one who rules our well-being. He is the one who rules our joy. He is the one who rules our happiness. That's why you're not happy in our spiritual life. We just go on and off, on and off, on and off. But listen, God said, you will get the final move. You know, in basketball, we play basketball. In the last second, it's so important that you, hit, you get the position, you get the ball. Especially when the, when the score is tied up. Especially in the score is tied up. It's very important that you will get the last position of that ball. Because you will shoot that ball and you will win. God said, you get the final move. You will get the final move. Don't ever think that Satan is the one who gets the final move. You will be the one to get the final punch. Now, this is what God wants you to know. You will get the final move. Now here, you are the one who will make the final move. And you need to understand that in the angelic conflict, God made the first move. Back in eternity past, before God created everything, before God created the universe, the angels, and man. He is the one who made the, the first move. What did God first move? He created angels. Now when he created angels, Lucifer... The highest, the most highest ranking angel reacted negatively to that move and rebelled against God and took one third of the angels and they become the demons with him. Now, God countered that move by creating man in his image lower, a little lower than the angels. And Satan countered that move by deceiving Adam and Eve, the first man. But God countered that move by providing redemptive plan for covering for Adam and Eve so that they could return back to fellowship with God. And of course, Satan countered that move again by using Cain to kill Abel in order to cut off the godly line. And that's when God countered that move again with the birth of Seth so that man will call, will call the name of the Lord again. And of course, Satan countered that move by the birth of Nimrod, who built the civilization. He built the big tower. He said, I want this tower to go to heaven. To get together the Tower of Babel and built a religion in defiance of God. And that's when God countered that move again by going to the Ore of Chalde, finding the man named Abram. And saying, I'm going to create my own nation that will obey. Satan said, I'm going to counter that move again. By trapping them in Egypt. So that Pharaoh would not let them go. The Israelites. But God countered that move again. By going to Midian and find Moses. And God told him to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And then he said... And the whole Old Testament is about move, counter, move, move, counter, move, move, and counter, move. You, you see that pattern because we are in the middle of the angelic conflict. And when we came to the Old Testament, there were 400 years of silence before the beginning of the New Testament. And both sides are just staring up the board, like I said a while ago. They were moving and moving and moving on, the, on their chest. And there's a moment that they're just staring it up. Like completely nothing is moving right now. Everybody's thinking. 
But when we have the New Testament open up, and so, you know, on, in the New Testament, in the book Matthew, we can see that so-and-so begot so-and-so begot so-and-so. Until you get to Matthew 1.16, we got Joseph and Mary, whom the Lord Jesus Christ was born by the Holy Spirit. Merry Christmas. God said, you know, I'm tired with this mess. I, I'm going to go down by myself over there. I should go down. And that's where the Lord Jesus Christ came down. He incarnated as, as a man, a human being. God became a man in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He came down. And Satan countered that move by tempting the Lord Jesus Christ in the wilderness. Then Jesus Christ overcame that move through the use of the word of God. You know, Satan tempted the Lord Jesus Christ in the wilderness. And then Satan made his final move. Then Satan, he made his final move. Maybe this is his, this is his very best of Satan. Satan made his final move by getting Jesus nailed to the cross. To forever get rid of this agent of God. Satan says, yes. When Jesus Christ was hanging on that cross. Satan was just, he was rejoicing. But you know what? That's what Satan's move. He made his final move. And that's where God, he made his final move. Because early on the Easter Sunday morning, a little while before the day, the grave, the grave, the grave was open. And Jesus Christ arose and the final move was made. And that move. Listen, that move, when Jesus Christ resurrected, that is your move. That is your move. Did you see the counter? Move, counter, move, move, counter, move, move, counter, move. Now, that final move is your move. Now, that's very important to know this thing, the angelic conflict, because... We are in the middle of this human being, believers in the Christian way of life. We are in the middle of this war. We are in the middle of this war. Now, Satan gets you thinking that you can get you, you will, he is the one who gets the final move. But God has a good news for you. You'll always get the final move. And when the Lord Jesus Christ went to the cross and he went back to life. That's your move in the chess match. You will get that move. And by doing so, now whatever is going on in your life, in your world, in your struggles, in your mind, no matter what it is, you know, is the accomplishment on the cross, of the cross. The resurrection of Jesus Christ was God's final move. And that is your move for victory. That is your move for victory. Very important. And we, we don't realize that how could it be? That's going to be my final move. Remember, Paul says I'm, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. What did the Lord Jesus Christ did to come back to life? And he's using the, the Holy Spirit. That's your move for victory if you want to be victorious in this life you need to know this you need to know this because satan gets you thinking that you always he is the ruler in your life he is the ruler over your happiness he is the one he is the one who can get all our joy been messed up but this is your move for victory and now he said here finally brethren Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and of, uh, be strong in the Lord and, and is in the strength of his mind. Remember again, the word finally is the word loipo. It means from now on. Remember that? From now on. Whatever happens in your life, but God said from now on. Whatever miss you have over there in the back. But he said, finally, from now on. This is a from now on passage. 
today, right now, at this moment. Paul says, finally, brethren, after he, he lay out everything, who you are in the Lord, that you have to walk in the Lord, and now we are at war. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. That's where you will be strengthened in the Lord. You're not going to be strengthened out there. You're not going to be strengthened out there. Be strong in the Lord. Now, what happens when Jesus Christ died in Colossians chapter 3, verse 10, what did he say? You are complete in him. You are complete in the Lord. You are complete in him. When you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are in Colossians chapter 3, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 13 and 15. He said that in Hebrew also, that Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and 15, he transferred you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. God already relocated you. God already, he relocates you. You are from the kingdom of darkness, and now you're already in the kingdom of light. And that's when he said in Hebrews chapter, in chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, he says, God already rendered Satan powerless. God already sent, rendered Satan, your enemy, powerless. You have to know that. You have to know that. Now, brethren, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able. This is the purpose why you have to put your armor on. You, so that you'll be able to stand firm, to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. To stand, it means to make stand firm, to stand the, the meaning of standing firm is to hold your ground that this has already been victorious. Like I said a while ago, if you see the movie 300, you have to hold your ground, advance, hold your ground, advance. In other words, live one day at a time. That's how you make it to the top. You live one day at a time. That's how you make it to the top. There's no shortcut in the Christian way of life because there's a process that you will be, you will be able to stand firm. And the word here against the scheme, where you have to stand firm on, the schemes of the devil, the schemes of Satan. Satan has the method, the word schemes is his strategy, his tactics. The devil, he has a tactics. The enemy of the believer in the angelic conflict with his Satan, the word schemes here, it means methodoia. It means this word reminds us that there is enemy. This is an enemy out there who attacks each and every one of us. And he is pretty ingenious in his attack. Now, you have to be aware and alert in the Christian way of life. You have to be aware on what's going on in your life today. Where am I now? Where am I in a Christian way of life? Is God too far for me already? You know, so many believers that we, we get lost on our track anymore. We, we, we are out in our lane. We, we become an AWOL, absent without leave, at war. Satan is very ingenious. He is very organized. See, he, Satan, he is well organized than we are. Of course, the more you're, you're, the more organized you are, the more successful you are. You need to organize ourselves. We need to. That's the number one thing: to discipline, organize your life. He does not attack all of us in the same way. See, Satan attacked me different way than Clifford. Clifford was being attacked by Satan different from Jake. We had been attacked in different ways because you know why? We all have different weaknesses. But we all do have weakness in life. Satan will not attack us the same way. Because Satan, he has also the agent, which is the demons, to study you. To study you. To study you. To study me. They've been recording what's my weaknesses in this life. Now, the schemes of the devil, now, Satan needs to have a vehicle to attack you. Because Satan cannot attack you directly now, 
he will attack you indirectly. Like I said a while ago, you have to be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. To stay right over here, to be strong in this moment, to, to stay in that spot right now, to stand firm and be strong. Now, one, don't go anywhere. Don't go over there because over there is to lean your own understanding. Don't go nowhere. When Moses was trapped in the Red Sea, what did Moses say? Stand still. Do not move. Do not move. And watch the deliverance of the Lord. They are in the dead end. Sometimes we're already in the dead end. Like I said, God has a good news for you. It seems for us that we are in the dead end, but you will get the final move. And that move is the move that Jesus Christ did on the cross. And he said the schemes of the devil to stand against the schemes of the devil. And the schemes of the devil, he is very tricky. It's like a magic. This is how Satan deceives you. He is a deceiver. He's a deceiver. Have you even been deceived? We have a lot of scammers nowadays. So many scammers. They call you. They thank you. They, they, they try to get your money. But Satan is more than that. He studies each one of us. The schemes of the devil. See, in order for you to move away from the... Satan wants you to move away from the protected plan of God. You are under the protection of God. You know, if you are in the, in the umbrella, you're not going to get wet by the rain. Because you are in standing under the protected plan of God. Satan wants you to get out in the umbrella. Satan wants you to step out in the umbrella. And that's the time you get wet in this Christian way of life. Now, that doesn't mean it don't stop the rain, but it's still raining. But because you have the umbrella with you, you're not going to get wet. That's why you need to have that. Now, the secret that, does, that Satan doesn't want you to know. And remember this. And give this, put this in your, in your vocabulary. The, the secret that, that, that Satan and the demons doesn't want you to know. That the power that Satan and the demons have. Listen to this. The only power that Satan and the demon has. Is the power that you give them that you grant them to him. Remember, the Lord Jesus Christ, God said that he is already powerless. The only power that Satan has for you is because you tell them it's okay. The only power that Satan has in your life is because the, it's the power that you gave it to him. That's the time when Adam and Eve they give this world to Satan, the planet Earth, to rule the whole world, to give this authority to the devil. Listen to that. The power that Satan has is the power that you give it to him. You grant him for that. That, that Satan, see, for, for our struggle is not flesh and blood. For our struggle is not flesh and blood. But against rulers, against powers, and the world forces in this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Our struggle, our fight, this is the combat of a military term. You know, the word pal means wrestling. Our wrestling about our struggle, our conflict, or the contest is not flesh and blood. Now listen to that. Over here, our struggle, people are not your problem. That's flesh and blood. If you have problem with people, people are not your problem. You think that you think that they are your problem because they were they are what you see, feel, touch, taste, and hear. But according to verse 12, whatever is going wrong in your world, people are mainly that can do it for the root. They are, they are the fruit. 
people are just the fruit and not the root. Anything that happens in your life is tied up with spiritual issue. But we are dealing the, the, the visible one instead of dealing the invisible one. We are dealing with the fruit. So many believers are dealing with the fruit, flesh and blood. But the problem is, it's right over here in spiritual life. In order for you to fix this, you need to fix this first. See, whatever is going wrong in your world, people are mainly the conduit for the root. They are the fruit. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. See, the battles we have in life, whatever they may be, are not fundamentally in nature, flesh and blood. So don't get mad of me. Don't, I don't get mad of you. Don't get mad of them. Don't get mad of them. So, you know, everything is cool because you know why? Satan deceived you that way. That's why. That's how Satan, you, you allow Satan, the devil, to rule over you. See, people are not your problem because you think that they are the one, they are problem because they are the one that you see, feel, touch, taste, or hear. Whatever is going on in your world, in your life has going on, is going on, or will go on, it is rooted first in the spiritual realm. It's an invisible. Whatever happens in your life, it, it's tied up to this line right here in what we call spiritual aspects, the spiritual realm. If you don't know how to, to navigate, so listen to this, if you do not know how to navigate the spiritual realm, you cannot fix the physical realm. Now we've been wasting our time fixing this thing, fixing this thing. But the problem is, it's right over here, not over here in the scene. Spiritual warfare can simply be defined as the conflict in the invisible realm that affects what you go through in the invisible realm. This is just the, you know, the effect right over here because of the angelic conflict. We just go through with this angelic conflict is God and Satan warring against each other. He made his move. He made his counter move, move and counter move, move and counter move, move and counter move. We need to know this because we are in the middle of this war. We think we are fighting with, with, our, with our brothers and sisters. No, that's not our fight. That's flesh and blood. For our struggle is not flesh and blood. Paul is very clear about that. Now, we waste so much our effort, time, and money to fix about this thing. But the problem is, it's right over here in the invisible realm. Anything that happens in physical realm is tied up in the invisible realm. Ram. Now, it is the battle in the unseen that is responsible. Now, listen to that. It is the battle of the unseen that is responsible for the battles in the visible realm, the seen. Whatever is going on in your five senses, see, touch, hear, feel, flesh and blood, it has been created in the spiritual world. Now, most of our attempts to fix this world is through using this world, but this world, flesh and blood, is not where the battle emanates from. Our battles is in the unseen realm called the heavenly place. Now, listen, this is so important. The word heavenly places is is efficient term. That's where you fix it. That's where the battle is going is on in the heavenly places. It's not in the in the in the flesh and blood. Now that's why it's very important in Ephesians chapter one verse three. What did he say? Blessed be the God our Father in the Lord Jesus Christ who bless us in the heavenly places. That's where your bank account, right over there in the heavenly places. That's, that's where God put your invisible assets, right over there in the heavenly places. Now, since we have, see, God assigned one angel to each one of us. And in the book of Hebrew, they call this the ministering angel. 
we have the guardian angel who minister in each one of us and we are satan also assigned one demon to study you and me to meet a report for satan so that he can do his attack in each one of us now all this invisible realm and that's why it's so imperative for every believer that you need to be spiritual you cannot fix this thing in a you cannot fix the you cannot fix the spiritual things in your flesh and blood now satan will say you know what now so many believers that we attempt this to fix this spiritual uh battlefield in our flesh and blood and satan is just laughing at you and me you see he was just laughing because you know why? Every time we do, that's why be strong in the Lord, not in your flesh, not in your strength. Now, every time you use your strength, you're helping Satan. You know that? Every time you say next time, oh, I'm going to be better more next time. And Satan says, I heard that. Every time you say yourself, I will be better next time. I'm going to fix myself. That's flesh. Because God, he has his own system how to change your life. We call this transformation <laughs> process. Every time, every time you use the physical realm, you're helping Satan. You're helping Satan. And that's why every time our attempt to fix this war, we need to be in the spiritual because this battlefield is held in the heavenly places. And where is the arena? The arena of the battlefield is in your soul. It's in your soul. It's in, in your soul inside, inside of us. That's where you fix this. This is, this, is where, this is where you have to win in the, in the soul, inside of you, in your mentality, volition, Satan is not stopping. He wants to do whatever he can, whatever it takes. Because, you know, Satan, uh, Satan says, I'm, I'm, I'm going to the lake of fire anyway. Might as well just fish right over here. And that's why when he knew that he's going to the lake of fire, and then when God created the man, created man, Adam and Eve, he said, you know what? I'm just going to fish out over here. You know, might as well just do something over here. They might take the bait. And lo, bloop, Adam and Eve, they took the bait. And here comes the mess in the human race. Now, most of our attempts to fix this world is through using this world. But this world, flesh and blood, is not where the battle emanates. This is where that thing started. You know, we've been fighting and fighting the flesh and blood, but that's not our battlefield, our struggle. Our struggle should be, remember, I told you three weeks ago, your struggle, the fight, the battle is the one that where the Lord Jesus Christ in, the battle for the soul, the battle for the soul. And of course, Satan, you know, he wants to do his schemes on you. Satan, he wants to do his schemes. All he has to do is to deceive you. All he wants to do is to deceive each one of us. That You know what? This is where the problem, your wife, your husband, your family, that, that's your problem. That's what, what Satan wants to put your, in your head. Your boss, everything around you. But that is not the problem. The problem is, is in the spiritual realm. Now, he uses this phrase, heavenly places, uniquely in Ephesians to describe all Christian activities in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Your blessing is located in the heavenly places. That's where your blessing. That's where Paul, he told you that this is you now. You are so rich in, in, in the Lord. Everything that God is ever going to do for you is located in the unseen realm. Everything that God promised and fulfilled that you'll, you'll, ne you'll ever need that coming your way is already been deposited into your account in the unseen realm. 
is right over there in the spirit wall realm. Now, people are not your problem. They are just to become a willing victim for Satan. Now, if they, are become, they become a, a willing victim, they are a casualty of war. They are just casualty. They are just comfortable Christian. They're just comfortable. They don't want to get, they don't want to join the struggle. But we wasted so much time fighting with people. Christians fighting with people is simply engaged in the wrong battlefield. Like I said, when we started this study, pick your battle. Which battle are you on? Are you in the right battlefield? or you are in the wrong battlefield. You're fighting against flesh and blood. God uses the carnal believer, now listen to this, God uses the carnal believer to test the growing believer and a mature believer. The reason why the carnal believer are still alive because to test the growing believer. And after that, sin unto death. That's what happened in the Exodus generation, just to test Moses and the, to test just one Caleb. And after that, they died in the wilderness. Now pick your battle. We all have battles in life. But that battle that you are facing right now is tied with a spiritual issue. If you want to fix that battle, if you want to fix this flesh and blood, you want to navigate you have to fix that in spiritual realm. Now here, he said that the power, I said that a while ago, the power that Satan has is the power that you give it to him. Satan is powerless. You give him the power to rule over you. It's you. Satan has nothing to do with you anymore. He needs your consent. Satan cannot even touch Job. Not until he asks for permission to God. The power that you give to Satan to rule over your life. That's why you are confused. Life has no meaning anymore. It's blurry and it's dark. You allow Satan, you give power to him over your happiness. And that's why you're not happy. And you, you're sad all the time. You give Satan the power to rule over your peace. And that's why you are worried. You give Satan the power to rule over your joy. You give Satan the power over your family. And that's why, you know, Satan wants to de destroy the divine institution. And one of the institutions is family. That's how Satan wants to, he's the destroyer. And Satan wanted to rule over your hope. That's why sometimes we feel like we are hopeless. But in the Lord, you, you ought to be hopeful in the Lord. And on and on and on and on, over your whatever you want to give Satan the, the power to rule over in your life. And it's sad because Satan has, he can't do nothing without your permission. The power that you give to him because you said yes. You know, that's the power that you give to Satan. Now, Satan attacks you, two types of attack, direct and indirect attack. Now, the scheme of the devil, Satan is a deceiver. He will deceive you, deceive each one of us. Now, God said he is powerless. Now, if you point a gun on me, I will be terrified. Now, if I point a gun on you, you will be terrified. Not unless I know that there's no bullet in your gun, but because you know why? Jesus already took the bullet out of Satan. Because we don't know about that thing. And that's why we've been terrified until now that Satan can only deceive you with a, with a empty bullet, empty gun. We are so terrified about that gun because you know why? We, we don't know that Jesus already took the bullet 
out of God, out of Satan. That will change my view out of Satan. When he said that Satan is powerless in your life. Jesus already took the bullet out of that. But it seems though he's still scared. He's still pointing the empty gun on you. But it seems like you're still scared about it. But knowing that your gun is already empty. It's not even loaded anymore, Satan. The devil. Because you know why? Jesus already took that bullet when he went to the cross. That's why the reason of your victory, knowing that Satan already didn't have the bullet, that's why your last move, knowing, oh, that's very important. When I learned that, that, will, that changed my life. Jesus took a bullet out of Satan and now, a lot of believers, they are still deceived. They are still terrified about the empty bullet gun from Satan. Now, when you know that, when God declared Satan that he is rendered inoperative, the old man is rendered inoperative in the book of Romans, that changed my life. Knowing that you, God gives you the victory moment by moment you live. Now, many people doesn't even see that on you, but you know what? It's between you and the Lord. It's between you and the Lord. Now, there's two types of attack. Five more minutes, we can get that one. So, two types of attack. Number one is direct. This is how Satan attacks human beings, believers. It's in direct attack and also the indirect attack. Now, the first one, Satan, back in the Old Testament, he attacks the Old Testament believer directly. That's how Satan attacks the Old Testament believer. And before the church age, body of Christ, he attacked the Lord Jesus Christ, you know. And that's how Satan attacks. Directly, he attacks Job. He attacks everybody. But now that we are in the, in the church age, other dispensation of time, this is how Satan attacks you now. He needs to use a vehicle. He needs to have a vehicle to attack you. He cannot attack you directly, but now he attacks, he attacks you indirectly. Satan uses everyone who is willing victim. Those people, those believers who's not wearing their armor, they are the one to be used by Satan as a willing victim. And who are they? You know, it could be your friends, parents, mom and dad, boyfriend, girlfriend, your boss, your coworker, even your pastor, or even your fellow believers in the Lord. They're carnal believers. Was used by Satan to put down the believer. Satan cannot attack you directly, but Satan will attack you in directly now. See, he studies you. He studies you. Because Satan, Satan knows your weakness as, of, as also as God knows your weaknesses. That's why it's so important to guard all the time. Stand firm against the schemes of the devil. His method, Satan's method, it's already, see, the, the beauty in a Christian way of life, you know, in the football, we're going to have a Super Bowl next week. In the football, they have their coach. He has his playbook. And Satan, on the other hand, he also have his playbook. The beauty in a Christian way of life is God give you Satan's playbook. This is how he played. Now, there is no excuse for the believer that you're still not winning. God already gave you. This is how he played. He will run. He will touch the ball and run for a touchdown. You see this right here? And God already gave you Satan's playbook. Remember, the two danger in the Christian way of life, again, is what? Ignorance and 
cowardice, coward. Because we are so ignorant about the word of God. There's nothing wrong with that. We just have to study with the word. We need to give the word as a priority. See, we know we do know Satan's scheme, how he how his method, how he attacked. That's why in the NBA, they replay, they replay, and they replay. They study how the boxing, they need to study the, the boxing type, how he fight, how this guy fight. You know, in the third round, in the fourth round, and all they have the replay and replay. They, the tape, they have to study the tape over and over so that they can be new how this person, their opponent, will attack. That's how God gave that to you. God gave you Satan's playbook so that you can study that and how he attacked. That is so important. That's why there is no excuse. That's why Paul says, for our struggle is not flesh and blood, physical realm, but it's in the power. And we're going to study all those things, you know, the forces, the four feared enemy force, the Satan's table of organization next week. And this is so important. And, and take note on that, that people is not your problem. They're just merely flesh and blood. Anything that happens over here in the scene, in the visible, it's tied up in the invisible realm. The problem is not here. The problem is right over here. All right? With your heads bow and let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Father, for what an amazing... When Paul pinned it down in the book of Ephesians, Father, the prison epistle about this combat, in the principalities against powers and, and all the demons, even Satan himself, Father. Thank you so much for giving us the victory started on the cross. Father, thank you so much for tonight. We pray for my family here in America, our loved ones back home in the Philippines, in Hawaii, our loved ones in Canada, Japan, wherever they are around the world. Bless them, O oh Lord. Bless them, Father. And um, we pray also, Father, for uh, Guy as he go through to the service. Protect him, Father. Give him, a, give him everything and the provision that he needs over there in the boot camp. And also for Jaden, Father. He's about to go through. And we pray for the newborn, Father, Grayson Jordan. As part of our family that he's going to grow up, protect him, Father, give him the strength and uh, the energy that he needs, the, the medicine, everything, Father. Thank you so much for my family. Thank you for your word. And we pray for this nation, the United States of America, as we continue to worship you, to gather in your name. And thank you for the technology, Father, that we have. We bless your name. We continue to worship you and to honor you, Father, because of who and what you are. You are a loving God. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Let me pause this one really quick. One second. Okay. 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 Okay.